Hello, welcome back to Thieges Notebook Review. I'm your host, Joel Michael. What I have for you today is from <music> Dell. This is the G315. Now, everyone else has already reviewed the model that comes with the i7 and the GTX 1060, but I wanted to review one that people could actually afford. So this guy has the Core i5 and the GTX 1050 Ti GPU. What we're going to find out in this review is whether or not this guy is still going to be good enough for you. Stick around. This then is the Dell G3 15. I ordered this particular model with the Intel Core i5-8300H CPU with four hyper-threaded cores that clock up to 4 GHz. It's made into the NVIDIA GTX 1050 Ti GPU with 4 gigs of GDDR5 VRAM. 8 gigs of DDR4 memory keep it going, and I already replaced the 1 terabyte hybrid hard drive with a 512 gig SSD. More on that later. These guts sit underneath a 15.6 inch 1080p matte IPS display and are powered by a 3500 milliamp hour battery. I was able to game on the battery alone for just under two hours, stream video for about three, and work on this script while researching on the net for four hours. That's a good deal above average for this kind of notebook, not near the realm of ultrabooks, but it shouldn't have to be. Taking the G3 out of the box, we see that Dell spared no thrift in the packing process. The box is only as big as it needs to be, and it has just as much material as it needs to keep the notebook secure. It didn't arrive in a bigger box, this is all I got. The G3 is wrapped in a thin plastic sleeve and comes with a dryer sheet inside of it. You can't get a USB stick from Dell with their special version of Windows 10, so upgrading the boot drive will be a pain, but hey, you get a quick start guide, woohoo! The 130 watt AC adapter has quite the girth to it with a nice long cable, but a very short from the wall cord for a total of a bit over 7 feet, which is long enough in most cases. Fortunately, the from the wall cord is not proprietary and can be swapped out for a longer one. Out of the box, the G3 boots up with a 50% battery charge. As configured, it goes for $800 on Dell's website, plus another $50 for a 128GB SSD boot drive, which you'll definitely want to have, and then later you can swap out the 1TB storage drive for a 512GB SSD when your pockets recover. Let's see what all those holes in the side do. On the right is the SD card reader, USB 2.0, and the lock slot. The left is where we get the DC in, HDMI, Gigabit LAN, two USB 3.0 ports for a total of three standard USBs, and the headset jack. Only three standard USB ports is practically a crime for a notebook this size without an optical drive. There isn't even USB Type-C, and only the more expensive models come with Thunderbolt, meaning no external GPUs at this price point. Bummer. The top is plastic with a matte finish that gets dirty rather easily. You won't see fingerprints, but oil stains are obvious. The Chrome Dell logo is blue in most light and shifts to a blue-green under the right conditions. The super smooth plastic trim around the keyboard hides oil stains much better thanks to the gray color, but it's not invincible. The keyboard keys and touchpad can also become stained, and their finish is not smooth to the touch and will wear over time. The body of the notebook is very rigid overall with little flex, even in the display, thanks to the gargantuan center hinge. Removing the bottom cover is tedious, but not that much of a chore. Eight screws are removable, and two will unscrew, but not come out. I would recommend a prying tool to take the rest of it off, and after removing and replacing the cover several times, there hasn't been a lick of damage anywhere. Here we see that there are two fans that exhaust out into the monitor, there is an empty RAM slot for a DDR4 stick, and an empty M.2 slot with a single offset prong. Replacing the hard drive is a rather simple task, it's installing Windows 10 onto a new SSD that can be a pain in the ass. Thank you, Dell, and your complicated drivers that don't mix well with vanilla Windows 8. Do yourself a favor and check out the extra 50 bucks for the 128 gig SSD boot drive. The keyboard on the G3 is pretty good. The keys don't melt under your fingers and do require some force, so my quick light typing style misses a few strokes from not pressing down enough on the outer keys in the middle of a sentence. The shrunken arrow keys will take some getting used to, but I don't mind since there's a full desktop style numpad with an extra wide zero key. Those are rare on gaming laptops these days. 
The numpad keys are smaller though, and I would prefer there be no gap between the numeric and letter keys just so that everything can be the same size. Strokes do tend to make a firm click with a small base presence, so a heavy typist will be a nuisance in the classroom. And finally, the blue backlight is rather controversial with all the blue light hubbub going on. Maybe that's why there's not that much difference between the two brightness levels. It doesn't bother me in pitch blackness, but in a dimly lit room, there may be some problems. The touchpad is about as good as you can get without physical keys. The movement is predictable and the gestures work well and only when you want them to. Still, right click is hard to find and it's all too easy to create movement when you're trying to press down. There's also no hotkey to toggle the touchpad, so you'll have to rely on Windows 10's built-in function to disable the touchpad when an external mouse is plugged in. Thanks to its large size, the lazy typist who rests their palms will have problems accidentally highlighting and subsequently deleting large swaths of text. The display on the Dell is pretty good for the lower price range. It's a 1080p matte IPS screen that I would say rivals the Acer VX15 I previously reviewed. The colors don't distort at an angle, but the brightness dims at a close angle just like the Acer. It also gets a bit more than comfortably bright and just comfortably dim. The color balance is skewed slightly to the warm side, and there's nothing outstanding about the contrast ratio. There's also plenty of ghosting here, so don't expect anything special in that respect. What sets this apart from other gaming notebooks with the cheap LCDs is the lack of light bleed and no color distortion at an angle. Again, thanks to the massive center hinge, there's no such thing as a wobbly typing experience on your lap where the monitor tilts back just far enough to let you find a pleasant viewing angle. Also, don't forget that this is the only option for the entirety of the G-Series lineup. It looks impressive for the lower price point of $800 or below and less impressive at about $1,000 or above. The speakers on the G3 are exactly what you should expect notebook speakers to be. They don't impress, but don't fall short in any respect. The included software doesn't scrunch the sound spectrum into itself, meaning that music doesn't sound muffled at all. So the bass line in Rage Against the Machine's Calm Like a Bomb stands out as it should, and the deep bass in A Perfect Circle's The Package is present and accounted for, and, although weak, is true bass. Thus the hard-hitting guitar riffs in the package come out clean and pronounced. It's not the loudest set of speakers I've had, and the overall tone is biased towards the treble range, but they do fill a room and don't leave you begging to use your headphones. Digesting media and games will be enjoyable. This is a sampling of the webcam on the Dell G315. This should be the same 720p webcam across the entire G series lineup. And it's not half bad, at least it's not uh, planted down below the screen on the lower bezel because that's annoying on the XPS lineup if you're listening, Dell. Uh, good motion in uh, excellent lighting. I have like six LED lights facing me right now. Uh, I'm a little bit overblown, but that's okay. Uh, most webcam conversations, I imagine, will happen in poor lighting. So, good motion. Not half bad at all. Burr. And that's it. There's not much to talk about as far as system performance. Spoiler alert, I cloned the original 1TB hard drive onto a 512 gig SSD. So I'm experiencing super fast load times, silky smooth web browsing, and zero buffering in games. It'll be the same story with the 128 gig SSD configurations. The Core i5 doesn't even sneeze at web browsing, Photoshop, and audio mastering work. I also dare to say it'll do you right for video editing, albeit for 1080p with minimal effects. It even benchmarks faster than last year's Core i7-7700HQ CPU. Intel is really stepping up its game in a big way these days in response to AMD. Dell's included software might bog the system down a bit, but it isn't all that intrusive to the user experience, and the battery performance slider is intuitive and effective. Also, you'll almost never hear the fans in any usage environment outside of games or complex productivity software. On to gaming. 
The story doesn't change at all from the Asus FX53VE I previously reviewed with last year's i7 and GTX 1050 Ti. Sure, the Dell benchmark's a little higher thanks to the stronger CPU, but the gaming experience is exactly the same. Modern AAA titles will demand you lower the details to medium, or a mix of medium and low, like Witcher 3, unless you're okay with limiting the frame rate to 30, where Ultra will do just fine. Same story with Rise of the Tomb Raider, which gets sub-60 in high detail. Competitive shooters like PUBG will require a reduction in eye candy if you care about keeping your edge over adversaries. As far as temperatures are concerned, the modern and more complex games will drive CPU temps to 100 degrees, bringing about throttling and an uncomfortable lap experience. Fortunately, the 1050Ti only gets to 88 degrees and thus doesn't throttle, allowing frame rates to go unaffected for the most part. Older and simpler games that don't give the CPU as much to do will be a cooler and more quiet experience. The maximum fan noise on the G3 does get up there, but not as much as a purpose-built thin and light. The speakers at half volume will compete with them, full volume will drown them out, and they will spool down quickly when you get back to the desktop, and gaming on battery power will, naturally, cut frame rates in half. For the bottom line, the Dell G-Series aims to provide a slightly higher grade usage experience than its Taiwanese rivals with better speakers, a better display, and longer battery life at a competitive price point. It's the first big deal to make it to market, and it's a great way to introduce Intel's latest series of CPUs. Just be sure to pay the extra 50 bucks to get the 128 gig SSD boot drive option. That way, you won't have to go through as much toil and trouble as I did when trying to upgrade from the original one terabyte hard drive. In conclusion, students get a thumbs up, but not two. It's still pretty pricey, has more than its fair share of heft, and the keyboard can make quite the racket. But if you do need something with a dedicated GPU that's relatively cheap, this is pretty much your only option. The Dell G3 is the best notebook for casual gamers. It's the best price performance ratio out there right now, and it packs a good amount of performance. Just don't forget that $50 SSD boot drive option. That's three times now I've mentioned that. You can no longer blame me for you not knowing about that. My job is done. Competitive gamers can keep looking. There's not enough power here to maintain 60 FPS with max details. Plus, the display has an awful lot of ghosting, and there aren't even better options available for the entire G series. That is so wrong. Desktop replacement users will be disappointed in the lack of ports. Also, the typing experience isn't the greatest, so long bits of dictation or coding will be made more tedious. For home users, I would keep looking. It won't be hard to find something cheaper and lighter without a blue backlit keyboard if you don't need a dedicated GPU. This has been a review of the Dell G315 here on Thieges Notebook Review. Go ahead and like the video and subscribe for more great gaming notebook reviews. Thanks for watching and you guys... Have a good night.